Section 1.3 is about deduction. So we just spent time talking about induction, and now we're talking about deduction. And in deductive thinking, you start with a given set of rules and conditions and determine what must be true of as a consequence, okay, or as a result. So you start with a given set of rules and conditions to determine what must be true as a, as a consequence or as a result. So true or false, you can rely solely on induction to prove that your conclusion is correct, and that is false. So induction, which is what we learned before, the last lesson was about finding patterns, um, and you cannot just use induction to prove that your conclusion is correct. You also have to use um, deductive thinking to kind of figure out if those things are true. So um, one of the biggest things of, of included in deductive thinking is what's called a conditional statement. A conditional statement. Um, a conditional statement is written in the form if A, then B, which means that if A is true, then B is always true. So, for example, um, if it said that um, if you were 16, then you were a teenager, that is a conditional statement, and that is always true, because if you are 16, then you are a teenager. But the opposite is not necessarily true, um, because if you're a teenager, it does not necessarily mean that you were 16. So, there's... Um, what we call a chain of conditional statements. And a chain is a series of events that um, rely on each other. So it says if A is true, then B is true. If B is true, then C is true. If C is true, then D is true. So um, the question is down here, if A is true, then D is true, or if D is true, then A is true. I'm going to give you an example because that makes this a lot easier to understand, and I'm actually going to um, kind of write out the example. So um, let's say that if you live in Dallas, that means you live in Texas. If you live in Texas, that means you live in the U.S. And then the last statement, notice that it says um, these letters repeat themselves. So it said if A, then B, then it said if B, so that's why I'm underlining those two in green, they're the same thing. And since if it said if B, then C, and the next one said if C, those are the same thing. So the last one would be that if you live in the US, then that means that you live in um, North America, which I'm just going to write as NA. So the first one says if A is true, then D is true. And we're trying to determine if that is actually a true statement or not. Well, if A, which was you live in Dallas, then D is true, which means you live in North America. Well, that is, in fact, a true statement. If you live in Dallas, Texas, then you do live in North America. So that is always going to be true. Okay? You can always jump from A to D, from one end to the other, as long as there is the connection in the middle. But the opposite of that, if you live in North America, then that means you live in Dallas. That is not necessarily true. There is a chance that it is, in fact, true. Just like when we were talking about the teenager and being 16 earlier. If you're 16, then you are a teenager. But if you're 16, if you're a teenager, that doesn't always mean you're 16. So you cannot go backwards. So they ask you to... Con create three con uh, your own chain of conditional statements. You can just use the example that I have given here. And um, the true statement combining them would be then that if you live in Dallas, then you live in North America. So moving along, it says that in geometry, you'll often use, I'm sorry, you'll often be able to use deductive rules to prove conjectures. Okay. 
to prove conjectures. So you can use deduction to help prove whether or not things are actually true. So we're going to go ahead and do a couple of examples in the notes or in the checkup because that's what's going to be similar to what's on your homework or your quiz. So starting with problem one, we have this set of marbles here. And we looked at a, a problem similar to this in the last section. There was one marble at the top, though. Um, so if you read the statement at the top, it says a pattern follows the rule. Starting with two, so that means it begins with two. Every consecutive, consecutive means next. So every next line has a number one more than the previous line. So this line had two. That means the next line should have one more than that. It should have three. The next line should have one more than that. It's going to have four. And the next line should have one more than that. And it's going to have five. Okay. And it's important that we note this is the first line, the second, the third, and the fourth. So the first question asks us how many marbles must be in the fifth line. Well the fifth line would be the next line and it's going to have to have one more than the fourth line so it's going to have to have six. You may also notice a different type of pattern. So there's several, there's sometimes multiple ways to see the patterns and some of you may notice that the number of marbles is one more than what line it is. So because it was line one there was two marbles. Line two had three, line three had four, line four had five, five had six. So line nine is going to have ten. It's going to have one more marble. So moving on to the next example. This one looks a little more complicated. It's not growing normally. So it says a pattern follows the rules starting with three. So that means our first line is going to have three. Every consecutive line has two less than twice the previous line. So if I were to write that out, two less than, in math, two less than means minus two. Twice the previous line means two times the previous. I'm going to call that 2p. So that means that in order to figure out each line, I should be able to use this formula. So let's see. The first one had three. The second one, we can tell that it had four. The third one, we can tell that it had six, sorry, not five. And the fourth one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we could continue, try and figure out what the pattern is, and we can continue that, or we can use this formula that they gave us. Because we know that each line has two times the previous minus two. So it says how many marbles must be in the fifth line? Well, the fifth line is going to be two times the previous line, which had 10, minus 2. 2 times 10 is 20, minus 2 is going to be 18. So in line 5, there would be 18. We're not actually going to do the next one, because in order to do number 6, you need to have done number 5. And that's one you're going to do on your own. So for questions 7 through 10, starting, we have a new pattern. Starting with 1, every consecutive line has a number of one more than twice the previous. So let's look at the picture. Maybe that'll help us understand that. So it says starting with 1, every consecutive line has a number one more than. Okay, one more than means plus 1. Twice the previous means two times the previous. So that's how we're going to be able to figure this out. All right, so the first line had one, the second line had three, and the third line had seven. So let's look at that, what it told So number seven says how many marbles must be in the fourth line. Well, we just figured out that it was two times the previous, two times the previous, not two plus the previous, I apologize, plus one. So, the previous line, so we're looking for the fourth line. That means we need to use the third line to help us. That's going to be two times the number in the third line, which was seven, plus one. Well, two times seven is 14, and 14 plus one is 15. So in line seven, there would be 15. So I'm not going to continue on because you need to do eight and ten on your own.